BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to Romans chapter 12, please. Vamos a buscar una bendición. Vámonos a Romanos 12, por favor. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romanos 12, versículos 1 y 2. Going on to the next slide. This is a Messianic lesson number 873. It's called Mind Control. Esta es la lección Messianica 873 y se titula Control Mental. Messianic lesson number 873. It's called Mind Control. Lección Mesiánica 873 se titula Control Mental. Going on to the next slide. Everything you hear today will be in English and in Spanish. Todo lo que escucharás en este día será en inglés y en español. We're going to read a lot of God's Word today. Vamos a leer mucho de la Palabra del Señor en este mm -hmm. día. I'm only going to read it in English. El Rabino solo leerá en el idioma inglés. That will give you an opportunity to read in whatever language you want to read in. Dándote la oportunidad de que la leas en cualquier idioma que desees leerla. All right. Let's go on to the next slide. I'm going to read in English, and then Elizabeth's going to read in, in Spanish. Okay. Synopsis. The world and its systems seek to control our minds. From the lowest level local government to the highest level official, Satan. They seek to try to control your mind. How do you stop them? What tools are needed? Can you do it by yourself? Let's explore this very interesting topic today. Amén. Vamos a resumen. Dice, el mundo y su sistema buscan controlar nuestras mentes, desde el gobierno local de nivel más bajo hasta Satanás, su oficial de nivel más alto. Buscan tratar de controlar sus, eh, sus mentes. ¿Cómo los detienes? ¿Qué herramientas se necesitan? ¿Puedes hacerlo por ti mismo? Exploraremos este tema muy interesante el día de hoy. Amén. Let's now go into lesson, Hashbat lesson number one, mind control. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, by the renewing of your minds, by Ecker Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1, 2 and 3, a mind controlled by the devil got them killed. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, Yochanan John chapter 8, verse 44, the devil wants to control your mind. Revelation 12, verse 7 through 9, the deceiver of the whole world. Matthew, Matthew 24, verses 21 to 24. False prophets performing great miracles. Amazing things. So as a fool, even the chosen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. Obeyed the ruler of the power of the air, who is still at work among the disobedient. Yochanan in John chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. Controlling our minds requires this prayer. Cole at Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. I will test myself with pleasure and enjoying good things. Cole at Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Here's the final conclusion. And then finally, Romans 8, verse 5 through 8. The mind controlled by the old nature is hostile to God. Amen. Primera lección de Hashabah dice control mental. Romanos 12, del 1 hasta el 2. Por medio de la renovación de nuestro entendimiento. Levítico 10, del 1 hasta el 3. Una mente controlada por el diablo hizo que los mataran. Romanos 12, del 1 hasta el 2. Juan 8, 44, el diablo quiere controlar tu mente. Apocalipsis 12, del 7 hasta el 9, el engañador del mundo entero. Mateo 24, del 21 hasta el 24, falsos profetas que realizan grandes milagros. Cosas asombrosas para engañar incluso a los escogidos. 
Efesios 2, del 1 hasta el 3, obedeció al príncipe de las potestades del aire, quien todavía obra entre los desobedientes. Juan 17, del 20 hasta el 21, reno, eh, renovando nuestras mentes, se requiere esta oración. Coelé, Iglesia 6, 2, del 1 hasta el 11. Your Honor, call it Ecclesiastes 2, verse 1 through 11. May, may probare con placer y disfrutando de las cosas buenas. Call it Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Aquí está la conclusión final. Romanos 8, versículo 5 a 8. Porque la mente domina dor por la viga. Not, not to love. I don't know that word. As amiga de Dios. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. I couldn't see because your image is in the way. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go to the word, everybody. Vámonos a la palabra del Señor. Okay. Now let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Vámonos a Romanos 12, 1 y 2. I highly recommend everybody paying attention. This is going to be a great lesson for each one of us. El rabino les recomienda que presten atención con mucho cuidado. Será una lección muy interesante para cada una de nuestras vidas. What we're going to learn today Lo que aprenderemos en este día is how powerful you can, how powerfully you can control your mind. Es que con, eh, con tanto poder o qué tan poderosamente tú puedes controlar tu mente. We're going to see how Satan will control most of the world's mind. Veremos cómo Satanás puede eh, controlar la mayor parte de las mentes de los que habitan en el mundo actualmente. So, in the world that wants to control us. En el mundo que quiere controlarnos a nosotros. One of the things that is the main part of controlling us is controlling our minds. Una de las cosas principales en cuanto a controlar nuestras vidas es controlar nuestras mentes. So, we're going to learn how to control our own minds through the Word of God today. Vamos a aprender en este día cómo controlar nuestras propias mentes a través de la palabra del Señor. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Romanos 12, 1 y 2. There, I exhort you there, <coughs> excuse me, I exhort you therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercies, to offer yourselves as a sacrifice, living and set apart for God. This will please him. It is a logical temple worship for you. In other words, do not let yourselves be conformed to the standards of the Alam Hazet, and said, keep letting yourselves be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you will know that what God wants, and will agree that what he wants is good, satisfying, and able to succeed. Amen? Amen. So what, what we're going to be learning today is how to renew our minds. Lo que estaremos aprendiendo en este día es en cómo renovar nuestras mentes. And we must do everything in our own personal power to control our own Mind. Debemos de hacer todo lo que esté en nuestras propias manos, centro de nuestras capacidades para controlar nuestras mentes. You must fight being controlled by the world and today's secular systems. Tienes que rebelarte en cuanto al eh, ser controlado por el mundo y el sistema secular eh, de hoy en día. We must choose to be obedient to Elohim. Debemos de escoger el ser obedientes a Elohim. And if you don't choose to be obedient to Elohim, y si no escoges el ser obediente a Elohim, you will be obedient to Satan. Serás obediente a Satanás. Each of us must choose to control our own mind, as verse number two says. Cada uno de nosotros debe de, debe de escoger el controlar propiamente, así como nos dice el versículo dos. In verse number two, <laughs> in verse number two, it said, "Renew your mind." En el versículo número 12 nos dice que renovemos nuestras mentes. The world and, um, you know, its system seeks to control every move and even more our thoughts. El mundo y su sistema buscan controlar todos nuestros movimientos, especialmente nuestros pensamientos. The world wants to control what you do. El mundo quiere controlar lo que haces. The world wants to control where you go. Quiere controlar hacia dónde vas. The world even wants to control... What you think about. Y quiere controlar incluso las cosas las cuales tú piensas. But what we're being told in this 2,000-year-old document. 
Pero lo que se nos está diciendo en este escrito que data de 2000 años. What we're being told in Romans it's almost 2000 years old. Lo que se nos está diciendo en la carta a los romanos data de unos 2000 años atrás. Is we have the power over the world. Es que nosotros tenemos poder o autoridad sobre el mundo. We have the power to control our own minds. Tenemos el poder de controlar nuestras propias mentes o pensamientos. And you might think that this, this is simple, but it is not. Y tú pensarás que es cosa simple, pero no es así. We're going to read a, a lot of God's word today. Vamos a leer mucho de la palabra del Señor en este día. And we're going to see how powerful Satan is. Y vamos a darnos cuenta que tan poderoso realmente es Satanás. Because the word's going to tell us. La palabra no lo va a decir. That Satan will be able to control the world. Que Satanás va a tener la capacidad de con controlar al mundo. He's going to be able to control the people's minds in the world. Va a poder controlar la mente de aquellos que habitan o que viven en el mundo. So let's go back to Romans 12, verse 1. Vámonos a Romanos 12, 1. Romans 12, verse 1. Romanos 12, 1. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercies, to offer yourselves as a sacrifice, living and set apart for God. This will please him. It is a logical temple worship for you. Amen. Amen. Now, the first thing we need to look at in verse number one is exhor exhortation or urging. Lo primero que debemos de darnos cuenta eh, del versículo uno es este ruego, esta exhortación que se nos está haciendo, esta urgencia. Now, Elizabeth, do you have the notes so that you can do the translation of, of definitions and stuff? I don't. You don't have them, those? Okay, well, all right, well, we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it like regular. All right, so the first definition we're looking at is the La word exhort. La primera eh, definición que estaremos viendo es la, es la palabra eh, exhortar. In some translations, it's the word urge. En algunas eh, traducciones es la palabra urgirte, a que hagas algo. It's uh, the Greek word, word G3870. Es la palabra griega en eh, 8370. 3870. Okay. And the first definition definition means to summon. La, la primera definición significa el hacerte una convocación, el hacerte un llamado. The second definition means to admonish or exhort. La segunda significa molestarte o urgirte, exhortarte. The third definition means to beg. Y la tercera definición es rogarte. So, what Shaul is telling those new messianic believers. Lo que Pablo le está diciendo a esos nuevos creyentes. He's begging them, he's begging them to change their lives. Él les está rogando a ellos que cambien sus vidas. He's summoning, <coughs> summoning them to change their lives. Él los está amonestando a ellos a que cambien sus vidas. He's admonishing them to change their lives. Los está exhortando, los está amonestando a que cambien sus vidas. So this is a very powerful thing that he's trying to do. Esto es algo muy poderoso lo que él está tratando de cumplir o de hacer. And the only way that this can be done. Y en la única forma en que se puede hacer esto. The only way that you can change your lives. En la única forma en que tú puedes cambiar tu vida. The first thing that you have to do. Lo primero, el primer paso que debe estar. Is you have to change the way you think. Es que tienes que cambiar tu modo de pensar. You have to change the way you think. Tienes que cam cambiar tu forma o tu modo de pensar. Because when you're a person of the world. Cuando eras una persona del mundo. You have one way of thinking. Tenías una forma, una manera de pensar. If you're a secular man. Por ejemplo, a los hombres que, eh, o a los hombres que son seculares. Si eres una persona secular. You have certain, a certain way of thinking. Tienes cierta forma de pensar. Now, here in Romans, you, Shaul is trying to tell them, you have to change the way that you think. 
aquí en Romanos, eh, Pablo está tratando de amonestarlos a ellos a que cambien su, su forma de pensar. What he's telling them in verse number one, Lo que él les está diciendo por medio del versículo 1 is you have to allow the word of Elohim to rule your life with authority. Es que tienen que permitir que la palabra de Elohim dirija sus vidas con autoridad. Let me say that again. Lo va a repetir. If you're going to have control of your own mind, si tú vas a tener el control de tu propia mente, de tus propios pensamientos, then you're going to have to allow the word of Elohim to rule your life with authority. Vas a tener que permitir que la palabra del Señor ruja, rija tu vida con autoridad. And that means that the word of God has to supersede the world system. So it has to be above and the world system has to be below. Eso significa que la palabra del Señor tiene que estar por encima del sistema, que el sistema tiene que estar a un nivel o por debajo. All right, let's go back to verse number one and read it again. Vámonos al versículo uno. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourself as a sacrifice, living and set apart for God. This will please him. It's a logical temple worship for you. Amen? Amen. So, Shaul goes on to say, in the view of God's mercy, Pablo pasa a decir a vista de la misericordia del Señor. Because God has shown you mercy. Porque el Señor te ha mostrado misericordia. You need to think about changing how you live your lives. Tú tienes que pensar entonces en cuanto a cambiar la forma o la manera en que vives tu vida. And if anybody's been shown mercy by God. Y si a alguien se le ha mostrado misericordia de parte del Señor. Has anybody been shown mercy by God? ¿Será que el Señor le ha mostrado misericordia a alguien? If you do raise your hand. Si te la ha mostrado, levanta tu mano. Amen. So you need, what we need to do is change the way we live our lives. Lo que tenemos que hacer es cambiar el modo en que vivimos nuestras vidas. So if you've been shown mercy, you have to change the way you do things. Si se te ha mostrado misericordia, tú tienes que cambiar el modo en que haces las cosas. Look at verse number one again. Lean el versículo uno nuevamente. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercies, to offer yourselves as a sacrifice, living and set apart for God. This will please him. It is a logical temple worship for you. Amen. So now he says to us, we have to offer ourselves as a sacrifice. Ahora él nos está diciendo a nosotros que tenemos que ofrendarnos como un sacrificio. Now, we must understand. Ahora debemos entender. Jehovah only accepts certain things as sacrifices. Que Jehovah solo acepta ciertas cosas como sacrificio. So what is so important about our minds? Ahora, ¿qué es tanta la importancia acerca de nuestras mentes? If you're offering yourself <coughs> for service. Si tú te estás ofreciendo a ti mismo para el servicio. And on the outside, you look pretty good. En apariencias te ves bien, te ves muy, muy bueno. But on the inside, there's rottenness and sin. Pero por dentro existe el pecado, existe la pudrición dentro de ti. Jehovah can look inside you to see if you're healthy or not. Jehovah puede ver tu interior para ver, para así darse cuenta si estás enfermo o no. We always get the question when uh, around Passover about Pesach time. A Rabino siempre se le hace la misma pregunta en la época o cuando se está acercando pesa. You know, when we go to look, <laughs> when we go to get a lamb. Cuando, por ejemplo, se van a comprar el cordero. We can only look on the outside and in the, in the lamb's mouth. Solo pueden ver lo exterior del animal y la boca del animal. Solo pueden examinar eso. To see if the animal is perfect for the Lord. Para ver si el animal es perfecto para el Señor. But I always get the question, how do you know what's going on inside? Pero siempre se le hace la pregunta, entonces, ¿cómo te das cuenta? ¿Cómo está el animal por dentro? You don't know what's going on inside. Bueno, eso no se sabe, ¿cómo está ese animal por dentro? But if you're offering yourself a sacrifice to God. Pero si tú te estás ofreciendo como un sacrificio vivo, como un sacrificio para el Señor. He can look inside you to see if you're healthy or not. Tienes que examinar tu interior para ver si estás saludable o no. So if you got a dirty mind. Si tienes una mente sucia. Well, people are saying, I don't have a dirty mind. Bueno, tú te estarás diciendo, bueno, mi mente no está corrompida, no es sucia. Well, do you know all the categories of the law? 
¿Será que tú te conoces todas las categorías de los mandamientos? Ok, so Jehová is going to look inside you to see if you're healthy, physically and spiritually. Y Jehová observará tu interior para ver si tú eres saludable, tanto en lo interior como físicamente. And he's going to look mostly in your mind. El más que todo va a observar tu mente. Because our mind is the devil's playground. Nuestras mentes son un campo de batalla, son un campo para, eh, para Satanás. Okay, let's go back to verse number one. Vámonos al versículo uno. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercies, to offer yourself as a sacrifice, living and set apart for God. This will please him. This is a logical temple worship for you. Amen. Now we're going to look at what it means to be living and set apart for God. Ahora vamos a observar lo que significa vivir una vida apartada, vivir apartados para el Señor. To achieve this, it's going to take great mind control. Para alcanzar esto, para obtener este logro, va, eh, vas a tener que tener bastante capacidad en cuanto a controlar tu mente. Because if you didn't grow up knowing God's commandments, porque si no te criaron conociendo los mandamientos del Señor, you, you have to, you have to change the way you look at things. Tienes que cambiar el modo en que tú percibes las cosas. You have to change how you look at the opposite sex. Tienes que cambiar el modo en el cual tú miras o observas el sexo opuesto. You have to change the way you look at uh, financial gain. Tienes que mirar o observar de otro modo eh, la forma en que tú ves lo que es las ganancias, las finanzas. You got to change the way you, certain words that you may use. Tienes que eh, cambiar la forma en que quizás tú utilices ciertas palabras. So if we're supposed to be living and set apart for God. Si estamos supuestos a vivir una vida apartada para el Señor. To achieve this is going to take great mind control. Para lograr todo eso se va a tener que necesitar mucha capacidad, mucho control de tu propia mente. You must study to find out what is the correct way of thinking. Tienes que estudiar para así poder averiguar o encontrarte con cuál es la forma o la manera eh, correcta de pensar. Let's write that for our notes. Vamos a escribirlo para nuestras notas. I must study to find out what is the correct way of thinking. Debo de estudiar para así saber cuál es la forma correcta de pensar. I must study to find out what is the correct way of thinking. Debo de estudiar para así poder saber cuál es la forma correcta de pensar. I must study to find out the correct way of thinking. Debo de estudiar para así encontrar la forma correcta de pensar. Because if you're going into battle, por ejemplo, si te vas a la batalla, and you're not in one accord with the commander, y no estás en común acuerdo o de acuerdo con el comandante. If you're not a hard with what, with what Yeshua thinks is correct. Si no estás en unión con lo que Yeshua considera como correcto. Then you're going to get killed. Te van a matar. So if you're in a battle for Satan, for your soul. Si estás en una batalla con Satanás eh, por tu alma. You have to find out what is the correct way of thinking. Tienes que averiguar, tienes que aprender cuál es la forma correcta de pensar. What we're going to discover in today's, the rest of today's lesson. Lo que vamos a averiguar en el resto de la lección de este día. There is a kingdom, there is a kingdom way of thinking. Es que existe una forma de pensar del reino. There is a kingdom way of thinking. Existe una forma de pensar del reino. And there is a satanic way of thinking called Secularism. Y hay una forma de pensar satánica que se llama eh, lo, eh, que, lo que es lo secular. Okay. What's a secular way of thinking? Que es una forma secular de pensar. Money, drugs, gossip. Bueno, el enfocarte en las murmuraciones, en las drogas y en, y en cosas así. Sex. Sports idols, greed. En, en el sexo, en las celebridades deportivas, en, en lo que es la avaricia, en esas cosas. Lying. En mentir. Covering your neighbor's body. En codiciar el cuerpo de, de tu prójimo. Okay, go back to Romans 12, verse 1. Vámonos de vuelta a Romanos 12, 1. I exhort you, 
Therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercy, mercies, to offer yourselves as a sacrifice, living and set apart for God. This will please him. It's a logical temple worship for you. Amen. Amen. So we're being urged to choose to sacrifice our lives to Elohim. Se nos está urgiendo a que sacrifiquemos nuestras vidas ante Elohim. Now we know from Romans chapter 1. Ahora sabemos de Romanos. Romans chapter 1. Can't hear you. Ahora sabemos de Romanos 1. That the society that they were living in. Can't hear you. Can you repeat it, brother? That the society that they were living in. In, in la sociedad en la cual ellos están viviendo. Okay. Was pretty much like the society that we're living in today. Es muy parecida a la sociedad en la cual vivimos actualmente. If you read Romans chapter 1 and you look at our society today, they pretty si much lees, match. Si tú lees Romanos 1 y lo comparas con la sociedad en la cual vivimos actualmente, encajan bastante bien. Now, where is the Roman society from 2,000 years ago? Ahora, ¿dónde se encuentra esa sociedad romana que existió unos dos mil años atrás? They got destroyed by Jehovah, right? Fueron destruidos por Jehovah. So, the world is on the same path today. El mundo va por el mismo camino actualmente. And the common thing between then and now. Y la cosa común que existe entre ahora y lo que fue el pasado. Is once the devil gets into your mind. Es una vez que el enemigo penetra o entra en tu mente. And causes you to doubt Elohim's existence. Y causa que tú dudes en la existencia de Elohim. You doubt his sovereignty. Que tú desde su soberanía. You doubt his perfect word. Que tú desde su palabra perfecta. Once this has happened in your society. Una vez que este tipo de cosas sucede en tu sociedad. In your church. En tu iglesia. In your congregation. En tu congregación. In your home. En tu hogar. And even in your own life. Y aún en tu propia vida. The devil now is in control of your mind. El enemigo entonces toma, está en control de tu mente, está en posesión de tu mente. And once this has been achieved. Y una vez que él ha logrado eso. The secular powers of the world can make you do anything they want. Los poderes seculares de este mundo, de este mundo pueden manipularte a que tú hagas lo que ellos quieren que tú hagas. Like wear a mask for two years when you're not sick. Por ejemplo, que te pongas una mascarilla por dos años cuando tú no estás enfermo. Remember, it was only supposed to be for two weeks to flatten the curve. ¿Te acuerdas que esto de las mascarillas solo fue impuesto por dos semanas hasta que bajaran los contagios? And now it's two years. Ahora han pasado dos años. Okay, so once the devil has control of your mind, Una vez que el enemigo tiene control de tu mente, the secular powers can make you do anything they want. Los poderes seculares pueden manipularte para que tú hagas lo que ellos quieran. Let's go to Romans 12, verse 1 again. Vámonos a Romanos 12, 1 nuevamente. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercy, so offer yourself as a sacrifice, living and set apart for God. This will please him. The logical temple worship for you, amen. So what he says is live, live set apart. Lo que él está diciendo es que vivas una vida apartada. And this, <laughs> this is hard for many people. Esto es difícil para muchas personas. And why is this hard for many people? Porque es tan duro para muchas personas. Because people love friends. Does everybody love love your friends? Es porque las personas hablan a, o aman a sus amigos, a sus amistades. Does everybody love having friends? Será que a todos les gusta tener amigos? Well, blow them a kiss like Josh was blowing a kiss to you. Lanzarle besitos a los amigos. Okay. Now, living and set apart is hard because people love having their friends. Ahora, vivir una vida apartada es duro, es difícil porque a las personas les gusta mucho sus amigos, amistad. People love the things of this world. Las personas aman las cosas de este mundo. People love being accepted by the world. Les gusta mucho ser eh, aceptados por el mundo. Because it, it just feels good and right. Porque se siente bien, se siente que es lo correcto. So what does it mean to be living and set apart for ¿Qué God? ¿Qué significa entonces vivir apartado para el Señor? 
Think, let's think about this for a second. Vamos a reflexionar acerca de esto por un momento. What does it mean to be living and set apart for God? ¿Qué significa estar viviendo una vida apartada para el Señor? Say we get to Pesach. Digamos que llegamos hasta la fiesta de Pesach. And you go to a farm and you pick out a perfect lamb. Y te vas, por ejemplo, a una granja a escoger el cordero perfecto. And you're supposed to bring that lamb home on the 10th day of the first month, right? Debes de traer ese cordero en el día 10 del, um, del primer mes. You paid a couple hundred dollars for that perfect little lamb, right? Te pagaste cien, unos pues, cientos de dólares para poder comprar ese cordero perfecto. Now, are you going to bring that lamb home? Ahora, ¿será que tú vas a traer ese cordero a casa? And let that lamb live with your other animals? Y dejar que ese animal esté ahí viviendo con los demás animales de tu casa. Because remember, on Pesach, you have to give the perfect offering. Acuérdate que en Pesach tienes que ofrendar, hacer un sacrificio perfecto. Are you going to let that lamb live with the chickens or the dogs? ¿Será que tú vas a dejar que ese cordero esté ahí viviendo con los perros o con las gallinas? So, if, because if that lamb gets a blemish over the four days. Si esa, ese cordero se le hace cualquier tipo de mancha en esos 14 días que van a transcurrir. You can now no longer offer that lamb to God. Ya no podrás ofrendársela al Señor. So what are you going to do with that pe Pesach lamb? ¿Qué harás entonces con ese cordero de pesa? You're going to separate that lamb, correct? Vas a separarlo. You're not going to let that lamb be with the other lambs, correct? No vas a permitir que esté mezclado con los otros corderos, ¿verdad so que what, no? So what does it mean to be living and set apart for God? ¿Qué significa entonces vivir una vida apartada para el Señor? Look at verse number one again. Lean el versículo uno. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourself as a sacrifice, living in the set apart for God. This will please him. It is a logical temple worship for you. Amen? Amen. Okay, so you need to be living in set apart. Necesitas vivir una vida apartada. But now it says it's a logical temple worship for you. Ahora dice que es el sacrificio lógico para el templo. In some translations it said spiritual service of worship. En otras traducciones dice que es, el, es la adoración espiritual, if el sacrificio espiritual. If we're supposed to be a nation of priests, si estamos supuestos a ser una nación de sacerdotes, because we're supposed to be a nation of priests serving God, correct? Porque estamos supuestos a ser una nación de sacerdotes servidores del Señor. Should we not, not have the same ideas of how temple worship is supposed to work? ¿Acaso no deberíamos de tener la misma idea de cómo es que funciona el servicio en el templo? I hold your place in Romans. Mantén tu lugar en Romanos. And turn to Viacra, Leviticus, chapter 10. Y vámonos a Levítico 10. Turn to Leviticus, Viacra, chapter 10, verse 1, 2, and 3. Vámonos a Levítico 10, del 1 hasta el 3. Anybody learn anything so far? Viacra, Leviticus, chapter 10, verse 1, 2, and 3. Levítico 10, el 1 hasta el 3. But Nadab and Avihu, sons of Aaron, each took his center, put fire, on it, put fire in it, laid incense on it, and offered unauthorized fire before Jehovah. <clears throat> something he had not ordered them to do. At this, fire came forth from the presence of Jehovah and consumed them, so they died in the presence of Jehovah. Moshe said to Aaron, this is what Jehovah said, through these who, bear, who are near to me, near me, I will be consecrated. And before all the people, I will be glorified. Aaron kept silent. Amen. So now these two sons of Aaron. Ahora estos dos hijos de Aaron. These two sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu. Estos dos hijos de Aaron, Nadab y Abihu. They had their minds being controlled by evil. Las mentes de ellos estaban siendo controlados por, controladas por el mal. What would make them do this? ¿Qué es lo que haría que ellos hicieran eso? Where did the idea come from? ¿De dónde salió la idea? Because look at verse number one. 
Lean el versículo 1. Look at verse number 1 again. Lean el versículo 1. <coughs> and of Dav and of Eu, son of Aaron, each took his censer, put fire on it, laid incense on it, and offered unauthorized fire before Jehovah, something he had not off ordered them to do. Amen. They were doing something Jehovah didn't tell them to do. Ellos hicieron algo lo cual Jehovah no les pidió que hiciera. So let's think about where did the idea come from? Vamos a pensarlo de dónde les surgió esta idea a ellos. They decided they wanted to give Jehovah this strange fire. Ellos decidieron que querían entregarle a Jehovah este fuego extraño. Now we're not going to discuss what the strange fire is in this lesson. Ahora, para esta lección no vamos a discutir cuál fue este fuego extraño. But all, all we're going to look at is, is it something that God did not want. Lo que estaremos observando es que fue algo que el Señor no quiso, Él no lo pidió. What we are looking at is God did not tell them to do this. Lo que estamos observando es que el Señor no le pidió a ellos que hicieran esto. Jehovah did not tell them to do this. Jehovah no les pidió a ellos que hicieran esto. So who was controlling two of Aaron's sons? ¿Quién estaba controlando a estos dos hijos de Aaron? Two people that were working in the, the tabernacle. Dos, estas dos personas que estaban haciendo su servicio en el tabernáculo. Two people that were serving the Lord and giving him offerings. Estas dos personas que estaban sirviendo al Señor y entregándole a él ofrendas. How did the devil get into their minds? ¿Cómo fue que el enemigo entró en sus mentes? And we have this in the scripture. Tenemos esto, es, este hecho en las escrituras. It's in Torah, you know, these two were ate in the presence of God. Está en la Torah, estos dos comían delante de la presencia del Señor. And now, in ver, look what they do in verse number one. Ahora observen lo que ellos hicieron en el versículo uno. When the Dom and the who sons of Aaron, each took his center, put fire in it, laid incense on it, and offered unauthorized fire before Jehovah, something he had not ordered them to do. Amen. Amen. Where did this idea come from? ¿De dónde salió esta idea? How did they decide that this would be a good idea? ¿Cómo fue que ellos decidieron que eso sería una buena idea? You see how simple it is for Satan to get into our minds? ¿Ves que simple es el hecho de que Satanás pueda entrar a nuestras mentes? You must keep a hedge of protection around your mind at all times. Tú debes de mantener un vallado puesto en tu mente todo el tiempo. These guys were <coughs> giving the offerings. Estos dos muchachos, estos, estos dos hombres estaban en el servicio dando los sacrificios, las ofrendas. These two guys were in the presence of Jehovah himself. Estaban delante de la presencia de Jehovah mismo. These two guys saw the glory of God come down every night. Estos dos hombres veían la gloria del Señor que descendía todas las noches. So how do we protect ourselves from this happening to us? ¿Cómo es entonces que podemos protegernos a nosotros mismos para que esto no nos suceda a nosotros? You got to keep your mind under control. Tienes que mantener tu mente bajo control. So who was controlling the Dab and Abihu's mind? ¿Quién estaba controlando la mente de estos dos hombres de Nadat y Abihu? It had to be evil. It had to be Satan. Tuvo que ser el mal. Tuvo que ser Satanás. Now look at verse number two and so let's see what Jehovah does. Lean el versículo dos para ver lo que hace Jehovah. At this, fire came forth from the presence of Jehovah and consumed them. So they died in the presence of Jehovah. Amen? Amen. So fire came forth and cooked, cooked their minds literally. El fuego salió y le, le cocinó sus mentes. Esto sucedió literalmente. Now these two weren't new at doing their job, right? Estos, estas dos personas no eran novatas o no se sabían desempeñar su trabajo. Nobody twisted their arm to be in the, in the ministry, right? Nadie los obligó, le torció el brazo para que entraran al ministerio. But they allowed Satan to get inside their brains. Pero ellos permitieron que Satanás entrara en la mente de ellos. And they got their minds bent by the one who's been controlling minds from the very beginning. Y las mentes de ellos fueron controladas, fueron dobladas por aquel que ha estado controlando mentes desde el principio. Remember, Hasatan controlled Hava's mind. Acuérdate que Hasatan controló la mente de Hava o de Eva. How did, Eva. How, did, how did he control Hava's mind? ¿Y cómo fue que él pudo controlar la mente de Eva? He simply made her doubt 
the word of God. Él simplemente metió dudas en ellas en cuanto a la palabra en ella en cuanto a la palabra del Señor. He made her doubt the truth of God's word. Y le hizo dudar acerca de la verdad de la palabra del Señor. Because he said to her, did God really say you would die? Él le dijo a ella, ¿acaso Dios te dijo que ibas a morir? Once doubt comes into your mind. Una vez que la duda penetra o llega a tu mente. Once you begin to doubt the word of God. Una vez que empiezas a dudar de la palabra del Señor. Once you doubt the commandments. Una vez que tú dudas de los mandamientos. Then Satan has beaten you and is controlling your mind. Ya Satanás te ha vencido y está controlando tu mente. And with those few words, did God really say he would die? Con esas pocas palabras que él le dijo a ellas, ¿acaso el Señor dijo que ibas a morir? With those few words, think of this. Con esas pocas palabras y piénsalo. He was able to destroy humans from living in paradise. Él pudo destruir a, a los seres humanos para que no viviesen en el paraíso. He was able to destroy humans living in paradise. Él pudo destruir a esos seres humanos que vivían en el paraíso. And from that point on, he's been on a quest to control the people's minds. Y desde ese punto en adelante ha sido toda una jornada para controlar las mentes de las masas, de las personas. Go to Leviticus 10, verse 3 now. Vámonos a Levíticos 10, versículo 3. Moshe said to Aaron, this is what Jehovah said, through these who are near to me, I'll be consecrated. And before all the people, I will be glorified. Aaron kept silent. Amen. Amen. Now, this verse is very important. Ahora, este versículo es muy importante. You need to understand this verse. Debes de entender este versículo. Before going back to Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Antes de irnos de vuelta a Romanos 12, 1 y 2. Because it said, people that are near to God. Porque ahí se nos está hablando de aquellos que se acercan al Señor. If you're near to God, si tú estás cerca del Señor, you need to have a consecrated lifestyle. Necesitas tener un estilo, un modo de vida consagrado. You know, people will simply say, I'm a Christian, or I'm a Messianic believer, but their lifestyle does not warrant that. Las personas simplemente te van a decir que son creyentes, que son cristianos, que son mesiánicos, pero la vida de ellos no se alinea con eso. Look at verse number three again. Lean el versículo tres. Moisés said to Aaron, this is what Jehovah said, through those who are near me, I will be consecrated, and before all the people, I will be glorified. Aaron kept silent. Amen. So Amen. we're supposed to be close to God. Debemos de estar cerca del Señor. You need to have a consecrated lifestyle. Para estar cerca de él, debes de tener un estilo de vida consagrado. You need to live set apart. Tienes que vivir una vida apartada o consagrada. And why is this needed? ¿Y por qué se necesita esto? Because before the people, you're going to glorify, <coughs> you're going to glorify Elohim. Porque delante de las personas, eh, tú vas a glorificar a Elohim. So if you're out there, si, es, si tú estás allá afuera, and people know, people see you, if you're a man and you have the seat sealed on, y las personas, por ejemplo, si tú eres un hombre, ellos notan que tú tienes tus sixios puestos. They know that those strings represent people that supposedly believe in God. Ellos saben que esos plecos representan a personas que supuestamente sirven al Señor. If you, if you tell people that you're a Christian or you're a follower of Messiah. Si tú le dices a las personas que eres cristiano, un creyente, seguidor del Mesías. Now you step into a much higher level of understanding. Ahora has llegado a un nivel más alto de entendimiento. Because if you disrespect the kingdom of God. Porque si tú le faltas al respeto al reino del Señor. If you disrespect the kingdom of God. Si tú le faltas al respeto al reino del Señor. Then you're doing what Nadab and Abihu did to God. Entonces estás haciendo lo que eh, Nadab y Abihu le hicieron al Señor. And God, what did God do to Nadab and Abihu? ¿Y qué fue lo que el Señor le hizo a ellos dos? They disrespected him, right? Le faltaron al respeto al Señor. And he destroyed their lives, right? Él destruyó la vida de ellos. Because they disrespected his kingdom, correct? Ellos le faltaron al respeto al reino del Señor. 
And because of that, he got rid of them from the service of his kingdom. Y a causa de todo eso, el Señor se deshizo del servicio de ellos para con el rey. And if you're doing the same thing, he'll get rid of you too. Si tú estás haciendo lo mismo, él hará lo mismo contigo. Now go back to Romans 12, verse 1. Vámonos de vuelta a Romanos 12, versículo 1. Go back to Romans 12, verse 1. Romanos 12, 1. <coughs> I exhort you, therefore, brothers, <coughs> excuse me one second. Let me just get a drink here. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves as a sacrifice, living and set apart for God. This will please him. It is a logical temple worship for you. Amen. So what is temple worship? ¿Cuál es el sacrificio? ¿Cuál es la adoración del templo? How can I do this? ¿Cómo podré yo hacer? You must ask yourself, well, what is logical temple worship? Tienes que hacerte la pregunta, ¿cuál es este, esta adoración lógica del templo? Like, what is required for temple worship? Como, por ejemplo, ¿qué es lo que se requiere para esta adoración en el templo? The first thing you need for temple worship is... Lo primero que necesitas para la adoración en el templo es... Having a mind that allows full access control to God. Es tener una mente que le permita el acceso completo de control al Señor. If you're not allowing God access to your brain. Si no le estás dando o permitiendo que el Señor tenga el acceso a tu pensamiento, a tu mente. If you only allow God in the certain areas of your life. Si solo permites que el Señor penetro entre a ciertas áreas de tu vida then you're not, then the devil's going to enter into you. El enemigo va a entrar en tu persona. But if you're going to have the logical temple worship, Pero si tú vas a tener la adoración lógica del templo, you have to have a mind that allows full access control from God. Tienes que tener una mente que le permite el acceso completo, el control al Señor. If you're, you're going to have, uh, if you're going to, At the logical temple worship. Si tú vas a tener esta adoración lógica del templo. You can't allow any evil past your gate. No puedes permitir que ningún mal pase por tu puerta. Now how do you allow no evil to pass your gate? Y cómo es que no permitirás que ninguna maldad, que ningún mal eh, pase por tu puerta? It all depends what you're looking at. Bueno, todo dependerá de lo que tú estés viendo, de lo que veas. Your eyes are a gate to your soul, right? Tus ojos son la puerta de tu alma. Your ears are a gate to your mind, right? Tus oídos son una puerta para tu mente. So if you're looking at things or listening to things that uh, Messiah Yeshua wouldn't do. Si tú estás viendo, si estás escuchando cosas las cuales el Mesías Yeshua no hubiese visto ni escuchado. Then you're letting evil into your gate. Estás permitiendo que el mal entre por tus puertas. But if you have a mind that allows full access control to God. Pero si tú tienes una mente que le permite el acceso completo al Señor. Then nothing evil is going to pass your gate. Nada malo entrará por la puerta. Now let's look at Romans 12 verse 2. Leamos Romanos 12 versículo 2. In other words, do not let yourselves be conformed to the standards of the Alam Hazet. And said, keep letting your, yourselves be transformed by the renewing of your minds. So that you will know that what God wants and will agree that what he wants is good, satisfying, and able to succeed. Amen. Amen. So in verse 2, we're, we're allowing Jehovah to control our minds. En el versículo 2, le estamos dando acceso a Jehovah para que controle nuestras eh, vidas, nuestras mentes. In verse number 2, it says, don't allow you like to be controlled by the standards of this world. En el versículo 2 dice que no permitamos que nuestras mentes sean controladas por las eh, corrientes de este mundo. Because he said, don't, don't let yourselves be conformed to the standards of this age, of this world. Dice que no permitamos que nuestras mentes sean controladas por las corrientes de este mundo, de esta era. In verse number 2 it says, keep letting your minds change. Dice que permitamos que eh, nuestras mentes sean renovadas. It says renew your mind. 
dice que renovemos, que transformemos nuestras mentes. And when you transform your mind, y cuando transformas tu mente, it means taking an active role in renewing your mind. Eso significa el tomar un papel activo en, en renovar tu mente. So you have to change your life from a secular satanic. Tienes que cambiar tu vida de ese estilo secular y pagano. To being part of the royal priesthood. A ser parte del sacerdocio real. And you have to actively take part in controlling your mind for good. Tienes que tomar par parte activamente en controlar tu mente y para bien. Destroy all those things in your mind. Destruir todas esas cosas en tu mente. That have nothing to do with the kingdom at all. Que no tienen nada que ver del todo con el reino. And everybody has those dark places. Y todos tenemos esas, esas zonas, esas áreas oscuras. And if you think you don't have any of those dark places. Y si tú crees que no tienes esos charcos mentales, esos lugares oscuros. Then I think you're lying to yourself. Te estás mintiendo a ti mismo. Look at verse number two again. Lean el versículo dos. In other words, do not let yourselves be conformed to the standard <laughs> standards of the Alam Hazet. Instead, keep letting yourselves be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you will know, the, know that, know what God wants and will agree that what he wants is good, satisfying, and able to succeed. Amen? Amen. So what he's saying is you need to take an active role in controlling your own mind. Lo que él está diciendo es que tú debes de tomar una parte activa en lo que se trata del control de tu propia mente. Because we have to agree what God wants is good. Porque tenemos que estar de acuerdo que lo que el Señor quiere es lo bueno, que es bueno. This is what most of the body does not agree with. Eso es lo que la mayor parte del cuerpo no está de acuerdo. You say, how can I say something like that? Bueno, te estarás diciendo cómo el rabino puede decir algo como esto. How many churches or congregations out there today? ¿Cuántas iglesias o congregaciones allá afuera hoy en día? Are preaching Yeshua and keeping all the laws. Están predicando acerca de Yeshua y de guardar todos los mandamientos. Let me say this again. El rabino lo va a repetir. How many churches or congregations out there in the world today? ¿Cuántas iglesias o congregaciones allá afuera en el mundo? Have, are teaching about Messiah Yeshua and keeping all the laws. Están enseñando acerca del Mesías Yeshua y de guardar todos los mandamientos. If you're not keeping all them. Si no estás guardando todos los mandamientos. Then you don't agree that what God wants is good. Entonces no estás de acuerdo con lo que el, que el Señor quiere es lo bueno. Because isn't, isn't the Torah perfect? Porque acaso no es la Torah perfecta? If you believe it's perfect, say amen or put your si hand up. Si tú crees que es perfecta, di amen o levanta tu mano. If you believe it's perfect, then put your hand up and say amen. Si tú crees que es perfecta, entonces levanta tu mano y eh, di que estás de acuerdo, di amen. So then you agree that what God wants is good. Estarás de acuerdo con lo que el Señor quiere, que es eh, algo bueno o que es bueno. And we have to agree but what he wants is satisfying and acceptable. Tenemos que estar de acuerdo con lo que él quiere que es algo bueno, que es agradable. In our own lives. Para nuestras propias vidas. See, when we control our minds. Cuando nosotros controlamos nuestras mentes. You will see that Jehovah's word will be able to succeed in our lives. Te darás cuenta entonces que la palabra del Señor va a tener éxito en nuestras vidas. This is a key verse and very important in the times that we are living in. Este es un versículo clave muy importante para estos tiempos en los cuales vivimos. Because the times that we're living in. Porque en estos tiempos en los cuales vivimos. We're saying we'll use anything. Donde Satanás usará cuanta cosa le sea posible. Satan will use anything. Él usará cualquier cosa. We'll use anyone. Usará cualquier persona. We'll use any government. Usará cualquier gobierno. To control the people of the world at this time. Para controlar la población del mundo en este tiempo. Let's go to John Yochanan chapter 8, please. Vámonos a Juan 8, por favor. Yochanan 8, verse 44. Juan 8, versículo 44. I hopefully you're learning about today. El rabino está esperanzado en que estés aprendiendo en este día. John 
John chapter 8, Yochanan chapter 8, verse 44. Juan 8, 44. You belong to your father. You belong to your father, Satan, and you want to carry out your father's desires. From the start, he was a murderer. He was, he had, and he has never stood by the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he is speaking in character because he is a liar. Indeed, the inventor of the lie. Amen? Amen. So, what kind of what? So, what is this mind control? ¿Qué es este control de la mente? Okay, what does this see that Satan is using mind control in verse 44? ¿Qué es esto de que Satanás está usando el control de la mente en el versículo 44? Okay, when you think of the system that influences us significantly. Cuando tú piensas, por ejemplo, en este sistema que nos, eh, nos, nos involucra a nosotros, nos influencia eh, tanto. What Satan, is trying to do, what Satan is trying to do lo que Satanás está tratando de hacer, is trying to disrupt every individual at their very core. Él está tratando de irrumpir lo que, es, lo que son las bases de cada individuo. He's trying to disrupt them at their very identity. Él lo está tratando de perturbar en lo que es la identidad misma de esa persona. He's trying to uh, uh, disrupt them at their values. Está tratando de perturbarlos en cuanto a sus valores. Their beliefs. En cuanto a las creencias de ellos. Your preferences. En cuanto a las preferencias de ellos. Your decisions. De las decisiones. Your behaviors. De los comportamientos. And your relationships. Y de tus relaciones. So what Satan will try to do is Give you a new identity that follows him. Lo que Satanás eh, estará tratando de hacer es de darte una nueva identidad para que lo sigas a él. Look at verse 44 again. Lean el versículo 44 nuevamente. You belong to your father, Satan, and you want to carry out your father's desires. From the start, he was a murderer, and he has never stood by the truth because there's no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he's speaking in character, because he is a liar, indeed the inventor of the lie. Amen. Amen. Now Yeshua is telling them to their faces. Ahora Yeshua les está diciendo a ellos en sus rostros, en sus caras. Yeshua is telling those people to their faces. Él les está diciendo a esas personas en sus caras. That your mind is not controlled by Jehovah, but by Satan. Que las mentes de, ellas, de ellos no está siendo controlada por Jehová, sino por Satanás. He's telling them that their mind is being controlled by Satan. Él les está diciendo a ellos que sus mentes están siendo controladas por Satanás. Are you saying to them that their father is Satan and not Jehovah? Les está diciendo a ellos que el padre de ellos es Satanás que no es Jehovah. See, when you're doing mind control. Cuando tú estás en esto de eh, controlar mente. Mind control can happen from an external force. El control de la mente puede venir de un agente ex exterior. Can be done through physical or psychological means. Puede ser hecho a través de una maniobra espiritual o una psicológica. How mind control works. Es el funcionamiento de lo que es el control de la mente. As you take your subject. Es que tú tomas el objetivo. And you break them down so that you have total control of their mind. Y quebrantas ese objetivo hasta que hasta que tengas el control completo de su mente. Look at verse 44 again. Lean el versículo 44 nuevamente. Because we're going to see Satan having total control of the Sanhedrin at that time. Porque nos daremos cuenta de que Satanás tiene el absoluto control de lo que es el establecimiento religioso de esos tiempos. You belong to your father Satan. And you want to carry out your father's desires. From the start, he was a murderer, and he was ne he had never stood by the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he's speaking in character because he is a liar, indeed, the inventor of the lie. Amen. So he, Yeshua is saying to them that they are being totally controlled by their master, Satan. Yeshua les está diciendo a ellos que ellos están siendo eh, totalmente controlados por el amo de ellos, por Satanás. 
So he's, he's saying that he has total control over all them. Él les está diciendo que Satanás tiene un total eh, control sobre todos ellos. And in verse 44, that Satan, he says, Satan never tells the truth. En el versículo 44, él está diciendo que Satanás nunca habla la verdad. See, when somebody's tell, not telling the truth, cuando alguien no está diciendo, no está hablando la verdad, what that person is trying to do is control the way you think. Lo que esa persona está tratando de hacer es manipular, es controlar la forma en la cual tú piensas. Let me say that again. Lo va a repetir. When somebody lies, cuando alguien miente, they're trying to change the way you think. Están tratando de influenciar, de cambiar la manera en que tú piensas. So Yeshua is telling them that Satan was controlling the way they were thinking. Y Yeshua les está diciendo a ellos que Satanás está tratando de controlar la forma en la cual ellos pensaban. In verse 44, he said there's no, Yeshua said of Satan, there's no truth in him. Y Yeshua está diciendo de Satanás en el versículo 44 que en él no hay ninguna verdad. So that means he's going to try, try to control your mind no matter where you live. Eso significa que él va a tratar de controlar tu mente, tus pensamientos, no importa dónde vivas. Look at verse 44 again. Lean el versículo 44. You belong to your father, Satan, and you want to carry out your father's desires. From the start, he was a murderer. He has never stood by the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he is speaking in character because he is a liar, indeed, the inventor of the lie. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so when he tells a lie, he's trying to control your mind. Cuando él dice una mentira, él está tratando de controlar tu mente. When Satan does not stand by the truth, cuando Satanás no se para a favor de la verdad, he is trying to control you like saying this. Él está tratando de controlarte como por ejemplo al decir esto. He said to Hava, did God really say you would die? Él le dijo a Eva, ¿acaso Dios te dijo que ibas a morir? What was he doing to Hava? ¿Qué le estaba haciendo él a ella? He was placing doubt in her mind. Estaba colocando la duda en su mente. He was using a mind control technique. Estaba usando una técnica del control de la mente. See, he was putting doubt inside of her mind. Estaba colocando duda en los pensamientos en la mente de ella. See, mind control is known as manipulation. El control de la mente se conoce como manipulación. It's known as brainwashing. Se conoce como lavado de cerebro. Mental control. Como control mental. Coercive control. Un, un control coercivo. What mind control is, is some, some form of manipulation of the person's thought process. El control de la mente es cierta manipulación del pensamiento de una persona. Okay. And what you're trying to do with this mind control. Y lo que tú tratas de hacer al ejercer este, este control mental. Is you're trying to get them to agree to what you're thinking. Tratas de que ellos se pongan de acuerdo con lo que tú piensas. You're trying to remove what they have as a value, value and place a different value inside them. Tú tratas de reemplazar lo que ellos tienen como eh, los valores de ellos para reemplazarlo con los valores tú. And you need to, when you're, when you're controlling people's minds, cuando estás controlando las mentes de las masas de las personas, you change the way that they think critically and logically. Tú cambias el modo de pensar de ellos críticamente y lógicamente. This is very important because we're going to get to the book of Revelation in a little bit. Es muy importante porque dentro de un momento iremos al libro de Apocalipsis. And you're going to see Satan is using great mind control over the whole earth. Y vas a darte cuenta que Satanás está ejerciendo un gran poder de la mente sobre el mundo entero. Let's look at John 8, verse 44 again. Leamos Juan 8, 44. You belong to your father, Satan, and you, and you want to carry out your father's desires. From the start he was a murderer, and he has never stood by the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he's speaking in character because he is a liar, indeed, the inventor of the lie. Amen. Amen. Isn't this exactly what mind control Satan has employed from the very beginning? 
acaso no es este mismo control de la mente que Satanás ha ejercido desde el principio? Well, we just read in John 8, verse 44. Lo que acabamos de leer en Juan 8, 44. Wasn't that exactly what he was doing in the Garden of Eden? ¿Acaso eso no fue lo mismo que él hizo en el huerto del Edén? So from the very beginning of creation, desde el principio de la creación, Satan has been wanting to control the minds of the humans. Satanás ha querido controlar, manipular las mentes de los seres humanos. Let's turn to Revelation 12 now. Vámonos a Apocalipsis 12. Revelation 12. Apocalipsis 12. We're going to look at verse 7 through 9. Del 7 hasta el 9. Revelation 12, verse 7 through 9. Apocalipsis 12, del 7 hasta el 9. Revelation 12, verse 7 through 9. Apocalipsis 12, del 7 hasta el 9. <coughs> Next, there was a battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. It was not... But it was not strong enough to win, so that there were no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown out, that ancient serpent, also known as the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was hurled down to the earth, and his angels were hurled down with him. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to verse number nine, please. Vámonos al versículo nueve, por favor. The great dragon was thrown out, that ancient serpent, also known as the devil and Satan. The deceiver of the whole world. And he was hurled down to the earth and his angels were hurled down with him. Amen. Amen. Now it's very interesting, verse number nine. Ahora el versículo nueve es muy interesante. Yeshua calls Satan the deceiver of the whole world. Yeshua describe a Satanás como el engañador del mundo entero. Not some of the world. No ciertas partes del mundo. He says, look at verse number nine again. Lean el versículo nueve. The great dragon was thrown out, that ancient serpent, also known as the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was hurled down to the earth, and his angels were hurled down with him. Amen? Amen. Now, Yeshua says he's the deceiver of the whole world, right? Ahora Yeshua está diciendo ahí que él es el que engaña al mundo entero. Not some of the world. No ciertas áreas, ciertas partes del mundo. So I got a question for everybody. El rabino tiene una pregunta para hacerles a todos. If Yeshua is telling us that he's the deceiver of the whole world. Si Yeshua nos está diciendo que Satanás engaña al mundo entero. How do you not get caught up in his trap? ¿Cómo es que tú no eres atrapado en su trampa entonces? Let me ask you that question. Te hará la pregunta de nuevo. If he is saying he's the deceiver of the whole world. Si Satanás ha engañado al mundo entero. How do you not get caught up in Satan's trap? ¿Cómo es que tú no te encontrarás atrapado en su trampa? Think about that for a second, everybody. Piénsalo por un momento. Because Yeshua is saying he's deceiving the whole world. Yeshua está diciendo que él ha engañado al mundo entero. Is there a way for us not to get caught up by him? ¿Será que habrá alguna forma para que el enemigo no nos atrape a nosotros también? Is there something that I can do to my mind? That I won't get trapped by Satan. Será que yo podré hacer algo en mi mente para así no ser atrapado por Satanás? Yes. What did Rav Shaul say in Romans 12? ¿Qué fue lo que nos dijo Pablo en Romanos 12? What did Shaul say in Romans 12? ¿Qué dijo Pablo en Romanos 12? What was he saying in verse number one and two? ¿Qué él nos eh, dijo en Romanos 1, eh, 12, 1 y 2? He said you have to renew your mind. Él nos dijo que teníamos que renovar o transformar nuestras mentes. So you have to leave the world system and put God's system back into your brain. Tienes que dejar el sistema del mundo e instalar de vuelta el sistema del Señor en tu pensamiento, en tu mente. You can't allow the devil to control your mind. No podrás permitir que el enemigo controle tu mente. Well, how do you, how do you stop the devil from controlling your mind? ¿Cómo detienes al enemigo de que controle tu mente? You must know what is holy and what is unholy. Tú tienes que poder discernir lo que es santo y lo que no lo es. You must control your mind away 
from the world system. Tienes que controlar tu propia mente alejado del sistema de este mundo. Let's look at Revelation 12, verse 9 again. Leamos Apocalipsis 12, 9. The great dragon was thrown out, an ancient serpent, also known as the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, who was hurled down to the earth, and his angels were hurled down with him. Amen. Amen. Now, here's a question I, I've always had. Aquí viene una pregunta que Rabino siempre ha tenido. And I'm pretty sure most of you have had the same question. Él está seguro que muchos de ustedes tienen la misma pregunta. Why didn't Elohim just kill kill those angels with the devil? Porque Elohim no mató a esos ángeles juntamente con el diablo. Anybody ever have that same question? If you do, say the, raise your hand. Será que alguien se ha hecho la misma pregunta. It's like why did he just why didn't he just kill them instead of hurling them down to the earth? Porque no los destruyó en vez de lanzarlos a la tierra. Because they came down here and they caused more problems, right? Ellos vinieron aquí a hacer más desastre, a causar más problemas. Wouldn't we be better off if we didn't have these problems? No hubiese sido mejor el no tener estos problemas. Well, so let's think about verse 9 for a second. Vamos a reflexionar en cuanto al versículo 9 por un momento. Why did Elohim not just kill them so the people wouldn't have, wouldn't have to get deceived? ¿Por qué Elohim simplemente no los destruyó a ellos para que la, eh, las personas no fueran engañadas? Because the only people Jehovah wants it with him in heaven. Las únicas personas las cuales Jehovah desea que estén con él allá en el cielo. Is those who choose to be with Elohim. Son aquellos que escogen el apegarse a él y de estar con Elohim. We have to choose to control our mind. Nosotros tenemos que escoger el controlar nuestras mentes. We have to choose to separate ourselves. Tenemos que escoger el de separarnos a, nos, a nosotros mismos de consagrarnos. Look at verse number nine again. Lean el versículo nueve. The great dragon was thrown out, the an ancient serpent, also known as the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was hurled down to the earth, and his angels were hurled with him. Amen. So for the last, uh, like almost 6,000 years, he's been perfecting his craft, the devil. Por los últimos 6,000 años, él ha estado perfeccionando todas sus artimañas, todos sus engaños. So we have to learn how to choose God. Tenemos que aprender entonces nosotros a escoger al Señor. Okay. Now, this is talking about the end. He's, he's able to deceive the whole earth. Este, este pasaje nos está diciendo que al final él va a tener el, el poder, él va a poder engañar al mundo entero. So, let's think about this for one second. Vamos a pensar acerca de todo esto por un momento. Don't people learn? ¿Acaso las personas no aprenden? Don't people see these mistakes that, have done, that we've done in the past and Don't ¿Acaso no se dan cuenta de estos errores que se han cometido en el pasado para no repetirlos? Let me think about that. Think about that for one second. Reflexiona acerca de eso por un momento. Don't people see what happened in the past and learn from it? ¿Será que las personas no se dan cuenta de lo que sucedió en el pasado y aprenden de ello? What about Israel? ¿Qué tal con Israel? Doesn't she learn from And God gets angry. ¿Acaso Israel no aprende cuando el Señor se enoja? Evidently not, right? Evidentemente no lo hace. What was that news story we did this morning? ¿Cuál fue la noticia que traímos esta mañana? That they okayed homosexuals and transgenders to adopt children. Ellos han aprobado que los transgéneros, los homosexuales, adopten niños. <coughs> didn't, didn't Israel learn from the past? ¿Acaso no aprendió Israel del pasado? Like, evidently, people don't learn until they have to lose everything. Evidentemente, las personas no aprenden hasta que tengan que perderlo todo. So you, you're, well, you say, well, how, how can you learn? Tú te estarás diciendo, entonces, ¿cómo podré aprender yo? How can I not get deceived by the devil? ¿Cómo no podré ser yo engañado por el enemigo? You have to to follow Yeshua's example. Tienes que seguirlo, debes de seguir los ejemplos de Yeshua. 
Let me say that again. No va a repetir. You have to follow Messiah's example. Tienes que seguir los ejemplos del Mesías. Because now let's turn to Matthew 24. Vámonos ahora a Mateo 24. Let's turn to Matthew 24. Vámonos a Mateo 24. Verse 21 to 24, please. Del 21 hasta el 24, por favor. Were we able to get the picture up in the sanctuary? Or no? Yes, you got a picture? Thumbs up. Ari, Frank, I can see you. Do we got a picture in the sanctuary? Hi. Matthew 24, verse 21 and 24. Mateo 24, del 21 hasta el 24. My fever finally broke. Whew. Well, there will be trouble then worse than there has ever been from the beginning of the world until now. There will be nothing like it again. Yes, indeed. If the length of time had not been limited, no one would survive. But for the sake of those who have been chosen, its length will be limited. At that time, if someone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe him. There will appear false messiahs and false prophets performing great miracles, amazing things, so as to fool even the chosen, if possible. Amen? Let's go back to verse number 24. Vámonos al versículo 24. Verse 24 again. Versículo 24 nuevamente. For there will appear false messiahs, false prophets performing great miracles, amazing things, so as to fool even the chosen, if possible. Amen. How does this happen? ¿Cómo es que sucede todo esto? How does this happen? ¿Cómo es que sucede? It's called mind control. Se llama control de la mente. How does a false Messiah appear? ¿Cómo puede aparecer un falso Mesías? When you don't know the true Messiah. Cuando no conoces al verdadero Mesías. Your mind will be controlled by the false Messiah. Tu mente será controlada por el falso Mesías. Look at verse 24 again. Lean el versículo 24 nuevamente. For there will appear false messiahs and false prophets performing great miracles, amazing things, so as to fool even the chosen if possible. Amen. Well, how, how do people get misled? ¿Cómo es que son despiadas las personas? Engañadas. Because if you don't know what you're supposed to be looking for. Bueno, si tú no sabes lo que está supuesto a ver, a buscar. Because most of the church is going to be looking for a blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy. La mayor parte de las iglesias van a estar buscando para ver si encuentran un hombre rubio con los ojos azules. The church is very quick to say Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. La iglesia es muy rápida en decir que el Mesías es el mismo ayer, hoy, por los siglos. You know, they're, they're going to see Messiah wearing sitio. Van a ver al Mesías con los sitios puestos. So they're not going to recognize him as Messiah. No lo van a reconocer como Mesías. Because they say they're not under the law anymore. Porque ellos dicen que no están bajo la ley. So, how will the false Messiah happen? Entonces, ¿cómo es que aparece en la escena el falso Mesías? Because you don't know what you're supposed to be looking for. Es porque tú no sabes los rasgos, lo que tú estás supuesto a buscar. You're supposed to be looking for a Jewish man. Tienes que encontrarte o tienes que estar buscando la descripción de un hombre judío. You're supposed to be looking for somebody who keeps the Shabbat holy. Un hombre que santifica el día de reposo. How the false messiahs appear. Como entonces que aparece el falso Mesías. When you don't read your Bible. Cuando no lees tu Biblia. And you don't understand the Tanakh, the Old Testament. Y no entiendes el Tanakh, el Antiguo Testamento. When you don't know what the Messiah, what he lived like. Como no sabe, es cuando no sabes cuál fue el estilo de vida del Mesías. What holy days he, he celebrated. Que día santos observó él. When your mind is being controlled by the false information in your brain. Cuando tu mente está siendo controlada por falsa, por, por información falsa, que tu cerebro esté siendo manipulado. If you're not separated for holiness. Si no estás consagrado, separado para santidad. 
when you offer up strange fire. Cuando tú ofrezcas fuego extraño. See, you know, how, how did Nadav and Abihu get so off the path? ¿Cómo fue que se alejaron tanto del camino estos dos hombres, Nadat y Abihu? I mean, you really have to look at that situation in Leviticus 10. Tienes que observar muy de cerca esa situación que sucedió allí en Levítico 10. How did these two men that were part of the priesthood ¿Cómo fue que estos dos hombres, quienes eran eh, parte del sacerdocio two men that were doing offerings estos dos hombres que hacían sacrificios two men that were in the presence of Jehovah estos dos hombres que estaban delante de la presencia de Jehovah how did they get separated from their holiness? ¿Cómo fueron ellos apartados o separados de su santidad? They let Satan get into their brain. Ellos permitieron que Satanás se entrara en sus mentes. They allowed the bad, improper thoughts to enter into their brain. Ellos permitieron, le dieron acceso a esos malos pensamientos para que entraran a sus mentes. Now, how many times did they do this? Did they offer strange fire? Ahora, ¿en cuántas ocasiones ofrendaron ellos este fuego extraño? This is something very much for all of us to look at. Esto es algo que todos nosotros deberíamos de notar o ver. They made this one mistake. Ellos cometieron este error una, en una ocasión. And God destroyed those two, two men. Y el Señor destruyó esos dos hombres. So you can make a, an error so big. Tú podrás entonces cometer un error tan fuerte o tan grande. That God could take, <laughs> could take your life <laughs> because of this one mistake. Que el Señor puede quitarte la vida cerca en cuan, en, de este error tan grande, tan grave. That's why it's so important for us to por, get our minds under control. Por eso es tan importante para nosotros que, mantendram, uh, manten, que mantengamos nuestras mentes bajo control. Look at verse 24 again. Lean el versículo 24. Well, there will appear false, false men. There will appear false messiahs and false prophets performing great miracles, amazing things, so as to fool even the chosen, if possible. Amen? Amen. So how did the chosen get deceived? ¿Cómo es que los escogidos son engañados? You know, verse 24 it says even the, that even the chosen will get deceived. Dice ahí en el versículo 24 que aún los escogidos, si fueran posibles, serían engañados también. How do these, how does the deceived? ¿Cómo es que son engañados estos elegidos, estos escogidos? It's very simple, two words. Es muy simple y consta de dos palabras. Two words. Dos palabras. I want you to write this down. El rabino quiere que tú escribas esta información. How did the chosen get deceived? ¿Cómo es que los escogidos son engañados? How did the chosen get deceived? ¿Cómo es que los escogidos son engañados? How did the chosen get deceived? ¿Cómo es que los escogidos son engañados? The answer is two words. La respuesta consta de dos palabras. Nadav and Avihu. Nadav y Avihu. Nadav and Avihu. Avihu. Nadav y Avihu. The two sons of Aaron. Estos dos hijos de Aaron. Because we have no understanding of why they offered that fire. No tenemos ningún conocimiento en cuanto a el, el por qué ellos ofrendaron este fuego extraño. Except to say that it had to be seen. Excepto el decir que Satanás estaba involucrado en el asunto. And once Satan captures your mind. Y una vez que Satanás pone tu mente cautiva. Once he captures your mind. Una vez que él captura o atrapa tu mente. It is game over. Ahí se, se terminó todo. Look at verse 24 again. Lean el versículo 24. Then there will appear false messiahs and false prophets performing great miracles. Amazing things. So as to fool even the chosen if possible. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so, why are they able to do great miracles? Porque estos falsos profetas pueden realizar grandes milagros. Why is God allowing them to do that? Porque el Señor les permite a ellos hacer esto. Because the people don't want to look at God's miracles. Es porque las personas no quieren ver los milagros del Señor. You know, this comes from the understanding of, remember in uh, Exodus? Esto viene del entendimiento, si se acuerdan de Éxodo. In the beginning of the plagues? 
cuando comenzaron las plagas. And the magicians were able to do the same thing God was doing. Los, eh, los, estos magos, ellos pudieron hacer todo lo que el Señor estaba haciendo. Did you ever ask why God was allowing that to happen? ¿Te has preguntado alguna vez por qué el Señor permitió que eso sucediera? Wouldn't it be better, God, if you just uh, didn't allow them to do anything? No hubiese sido mejor para el Señor que no le hubiese permitido a ellos hacer, hacer lo que hicieron. So here in Matthew 24, aquí en Mateo 24, Yeshua is saying that these these false prophets, these false messiahs, Yeshua está diciendo que estos falsos profetas, que estos mesías falsos, they're going to perform great miracles, harán grandes milagros, amazing things, harán cosas grandes, señales sorprendentes. What you're looking at, people, is this. Lo que estamos observando es esto. People love to have their eyes dazzled. A las personas les gusta que los deslumbren. People love shiny things. Les gustan las cosas que los deslumbren, que les llamen la atención. You know, people love that whole mask, mask situation. A las personas les gusta toda la situación de las máscaras. You know, This is why we're not to be like the world. Esta es la razón por la cual no podemos ser como los del mundo. Because when you put on all your fake makeup. Por ejemplo, cuando tú te pones todo tu maquillaje falso. When you start to look like the world. Cuando empiezas a lucir como el mundo. You're putting on a facade of what you want people to, to look at you as, right? Estás poniéndote una cobertura de lo que tú quieres que el mundo, eh, de lo que se refleje en ti, de lo que el mundo vea. Why do I put lipstick on? ¿Por qué, por ejemplo, te pones eh, pinta labio o I lápiz like, labial? I don't like the color of my lips. No me gusta el color de mis labios. Do you leave that lipstick on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? ¿Será que tú te dejas puesto ese, ese lápiz labial eh, las 24 7? Okay. So, what these false prophets are being able to do. Lo que eh, pueden hacer o efectuar esto o realizar estos falsos profetas. They're allowed to show the world these fake miracles. A ellos se les permite que les muestren al mundo estos milagros falsos. They're allowed to do these amazing things that will dazzle people's eyes. Se les permite a ellos que realicen estas grandes señales para que eh, deslumbren a las personas. All right, let's go to Ephesians 2 now. Vámonos a Efesios 2. Ephesians 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. Efesios 2, del 1 hasta el 3. Anybody learn anything? Aprendieron algo. Or is this a boring lesson? O, o la lección está aburrida. Ephesians 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. Efesios 2, del 1 hasta el 3. Ephesians 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. Efesios 2, del 1 hasta el 3. You used to be dead because of your sins and acts of disobedience. You walked in the ways of the Alam Hazet and obeyed the ruler of the power of the air, who is still at work among the disobedient. Indeed, we all once lived this way. We follow the passions of our old nature. And obeyed the wishes of our old nature and our own thoughts. In our natural condition, we were headed for God's wrath, just like everyone else. Amen. Let's look at verse number two. Leamos el versículo You walked in the ways of the Lam Hazet, and obeyed the ruler of the power of the air, who's still working among the disobedient. Disobedient. Amen. Another. Verse confirming satanic mind control. Otro versículo que está confirmando el control de la mente satánica. That's what, verse number two shows that we have more satanic mind control over the people. El versículo dos nos está mostrando que tiene más poder satánico, más control sobre la mente de las personas. See, when we walk in the ways of the world. Cuando caminamos en los caminos del mundo. That are contradictory to Jehovah's mitzvot. Ellos son contrarios a los mandamientos del Señor. Okay, then you're being deceived. Your, your mind is being controlled by Satan. 
Ahí es cuando tu mente está siendo controlada por Satanás. If you're following the ways of the world that contradict God's laws. Si estás siguiendo los caminos del mundo los cuales contradicen las leyes, los mandamientos del Señor. Then your mind is being controlled by the ruler of the air and that's Satan. Tu mente está siendo controlado por el gobernador del aire que es Satanás. Here's the key to Satan having mind control. Aquí está la clave de que Satanás tenga este control mental. It said in verse number two. Dice en el versículo dos. Who is still at work among the disobedient. Que está operando en los desobedientes. Okay. Well, if you're being disobedient. Si tú estás siendo desobediente. Disobedient means you know what obedience is. La desobediencia, esto quiere decir que tú sabes lo que es la obediencia. Let me say that again. Lo va a repetir. Disobedience means you know what obedience is. La desobediencia significa que tú conoces lo que es la obediencia. And if you choose to have your mind controlled by the passions of the world. Y si tú escoges que tu mente sea poseída o controlada por las pasiones de este mundo. Because look at verse number three. Lean el versículo tres. Indeed, we all once lived this way. We followed the passions of our old nature and obeyed the wishes of our old nature in our own thoughts. In our natural condition, we were headed for God's wrath just like everyone else. Amen. Amen. So we obeyed the wishes of an we obeyed the wishes of that ungodly video. Obedecemos los deseos de ese video que no no viene que no es el señor. We watched a, a show on uh, on the internet that had nudity in it. Por ejemplo, cuando ves esos programas en el internet los cuales muestran desnudez. So if you're watching any of these shows that are on, I mean, nudity is everywhere. Si estás viendo alguno de esos programas en los cuales se muestra bastante desnudez por todos lados. So if you're watching any of these shows. Si estás viendo alguno de esos programas. That's part of the world. Eso es parte del mundo. That's an ungodly video that you should not be watching. Es un video que no viene del Señor que no deberías de ver. If you're watching a video that has ungodly themes. Si estás viendo un video el cual eh, contiene cosas que no, no inspiran temor al Señor, que no vienen de parte de Él. Then you have your mind being controlled by Satan. Tu mente está siendo controlada por Satanás. Now remember, way back in the beginning. Ahora acuérdate en lo, eh, al principio, hace mucho tiempo. Adam and Chava bit, bit a piece of fruit. En el principio, Adam y Chava comieron de un, del fruto. Lo from mordieron. A, from a tree. From a tree. De un, este fruto que estaba en el árbol. And the name of that tree was the knowledge of good and evil. El nombre de este árbol, este árbol era el árbol de conocimiento del bien y del mal. So, if you're, in, so inside of you. So dentro de tu persona. Still lives all the knowledge of good and evil. Vive este conocimiento del bien y del mal. Look at verse number three again. Lean el versículo tres. Indeed, we all once lived this way. We follow the passions of our old nature obey the wishes of our old nature and our own thoughts. In our natural condition, we were headed for God's wrath, just like everyone else. Amen? Amen. So when you follow the passions of your old nature, Cuando tú sigues las pasiones de, la, de tu vieja naturaleza, when you follow the, if you obey the wishes of your old nature, Cuando obedeces los deseos de tu, del viejo hombre, de la vieja naturaleza, then you're having your mind controlled by the devil. Satanás, el diablo está controlando entonces tu mente. And later on we're going to go to, a, we're going to read some of Solomon's words. Y más adelante vamos a leer algo de las palabras de los dichos de Salomón. We're going to read some of Solomon's words. Vamos a leer alguna de las palabras de Salomón. Where he's going to have every man's secular dream. Donde él va a cumplir los, eh, donde él cumple los deseos, los sueños, él los realiza de todo hombre. So, passions of your old nature. <laughs> Las pasiones del viejo hombre. Will be everything that doesn't glorify God. <laughs> Serían todas aquellas cosas que no glorifican al Señor. 
everything that doesn't glorify God. Todas aquellas cosas que no glorifican al Señor. Now, if you, if you desire to go back to the old life, Ahora, si tú deseas el regresar a la vida antigua, la vida vieja, and that happens to some people. Y eso le sucede a muchas personas. Some people get saved. Algunos que se son salvos, que alcanzan la salvación. And for a while, they're walking with God. Por un tiempo, caminan con el Señor. But then they just want to start going back to the old lifestyle. Y después empiezan a retroceder, a volver a la vieja naturaleza, al, al viejo estilo de vivir. So look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3 again. Lean Efesios, Efesios 2, del 1 hasta el 3. You used to be dead because of your sins and acts of disobedience. You walked in the ways of the Alam Hazet and obeyed the rulers of the powers of the air, who was still at work among the disobedient. Indeed, we all once lived this way. We followed the passions of our old nature and obeyed the wishes of our old nature and our own thoughts. In our natural condition, we were headed for God's wrath, just like everybody else. Amen. Everyone else. Now, there's a there's a big thing that a lot of people don't think about. Ahora existe una cosa que muchos no piensan o reflexionan en cuanto a ello. It's called forgiveness. Que se llama el perdón. A lot of people have problem with this. Muchas personas tienen una problemática eh, con esto. You want Yeshua to forgive you. Tú quieres que Yeshua te perdone a ti. But you can't forgive a brother or sister supposedly in the Lord. Pero no puedes perdonar a un hermano o hermana supuestamente en el Señor. I won't go to Beth Goyim because that person is there. Yo no voy a Beth Goyim porque esa persona va. So you're going to you're going to congregation because that person's not there. Tú no eh, vas a ir a la congregación entonces porque esa persona no se encuentra allí. I thought you were going to Beth Goyim to learn about God. Yo pensaba que tú ibas a Beth Goyim para aprender acerca del Señor. Well, I am. Bueno, si lo hago, si voy para eso. So what does it matter if that person's here or not? Entonces, ¿de qué importa si esa persona va o deja de ir? See, the world doesn't forgive people, but we're supposed to be very forgiving. El mundo no ejercita lo que es el perdón, pero nosotros sí debiéramos de hacerlo. And Peter asked the best question. Kepa asked a great question. Kepa hizo una gran pregunta. He asked Yeshua, how many times should I forgive my brother? Él le preguntó a Yeshua, ¿cuántas veces debería de perdonar a mi hermano que pegó contra mí? And Yeshua said, oh, a few times, right? Uh, Yeshua le respondió, bueno, un par de veces. No, Yeshua said, seven times seventy. No, él le dijo, siete veces seventy. See, if you're not forgiving one another. Si no se perdonan los unos a los otros. If you're not, if you're not forgiving one another, then you're acting like the world. Si no se perdonan los unos a los, a los otros, están comportando como los del mundo. If you're acting like the world. Y si te estás comportando como los del mundo. Then you're allowing your old nature to control your mind. Estás permitiendo que el viejo hombre controle tu mente. And if that's controlling your mind, that means Satan is controlling at least a portion of your mind. Y si el viejo hombre controla tu mente, eso significa que Satanás está eh, controlando cierta parte, cier cierta porción de tu mente. Look at verse 1, 2, and 3 again. Lea los versículos 1 al 3 nuevamente. <laughs> you used to be dead because of your sins and acts of disobedience. You walked in the ways of the Lam Hase, obeyed the rules of the power of the air, who was still at work among the disobedient. Indeed, we all once lived, we followed the passions of our old nature, obeyed the wishes of our old nature, our own thoughts, and our natural condition. We're heading for, we were, <coughs> excuse me, headed for God's wrath just like everyone else. Amen? Amen. So you have a choice to have to make today. Tú tienes una opción que tendrás que hacer hoy. You can get rid of the old nature. O puedes deshacerte del viejo hombre. And replace it with God's nature. Y reemplazarlo con la naturaleza del Señor. And Yeshua forgave us, right? Y Yeshua nos perdonó a nosotros, ¿verdad que sí? Have an amen for that, that Yeshua forgave us? Eh, ¿Será que va a recibir un amen por eso? Porque Yeshua nos perdonó a nosotros. Everybody here on... With us say here in the sanctuary online, were you forgiven a, a fair amount of stuff? 
a aquellos que están en las redes o en el santuario, ¿será que a ustedes se le perdonó muchas cosas? I know I was. A Rabino sí se le perdonó. And Yeshua said, I would just come for the one if he had to. Y Yeshua dijo que él vendría por uno si tendría que venir por él. Okay, so let's read one, two, and three one last time. Leamos los versículos del uno hasta el tres por última vez. You used to be dead because of your sins and acts of disobedience. You walked in the ways of Elam Hazeh, and obeyed the ruler of the power of the air, who is still at work among the disobedient. Indeed, we all once lived this way. We followed the passions of our old nature and obeyed the wishes of our old nature and our own thoughts. In our natural condition, we were headed for God's wrath, like just like everyone else. Amen? Amen. So here, he's still at work with the acts of those who are being disobedient. Aquí él sigue operando con aquellos que son desobedientes. He's still at work with those who want to be disobedient. Él sigue operando en aquellos que quieren ser desobedientes. So, here we have to change to being obedient, right? Aquí nosotros tenemos que cambiar y escoger ser obedientes. We have to change the way we do things. Tenemos que cambiar el modo, la forma en el cual hacemos las cosas. We have to change the way we think. Tenemos que cambiar nuestro modo de pensar. We got to change what we watch. Tenemos que cambiar lo que vemos. I mean, everything today has profanity in it. Todo lo, lo que se pone, los programas de actuales tienen profanidades. So many shows have ungodly themes. Muchos pro programas con temas que no provienen, que no son del Señor. Shows that <coughs> shouldn't have nudity in it, have nudity in it. Programas que no deberían demostrar desnudez, pero de todos modos lo hacen. So we, we can't be controlled by the old nature. No podemos ser controlados por el viejo hombre. I turn to John 17 now. Vámonos a Juan 17. John 17, verse 20 and 21. Juan 17, 20 y 21. You didn't think this were, there were that many verses with Satan having control over our minds in the Bible, huh? Tú no creía que había tantos eh, versículos de Satanás que, que tiene este poder de eh, controlar nuestras mentes. I was amazed how, how many scriptures talked about him controlling our minds. El rabino se sorprendió de tantos versículos bíblicos que nos hablan de esto, de Satanás controlando nuestras mentes. It's in a lot of places in the Bible. Se encuentra en muchos lugares de nuestras Biblias. John, Yochanan 17, verse 20 and 21. Juan 17, 20 y 21. Now here's a beautiful thing. Aquí viene algo muy hermoso. I pray not only for these, but also for those who will trust in me because of their word. That they may be one, just as you, Father, are united with me and I with you. I pray that they be, be united with us so that the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to verse 21. Vámonos al versículo 21. That they may be one, just as you, Father, are united with me and I with you. I pray that they may be united with us so that the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. Amen. Yeshua had this prayer to, to make them one mind like us. Yeshua tuvo esta oración para que hiciera los discípulos una mente, para que fueran uno así como él y el Padre son uno. Yeshua has his prayer. Yeshua hizo esta oración. He's praying that, that we would be of one mind like he and the Father are of one mind. Él oró para que tengamos una sola mente así como él y el Padre son de una sola mente. They're not the same people, they just have the same one mind thought process. No son la misma persona, pero tienen el mismo modo de pensar. The Father and the Son are of one mind on all things. El Padre y el Hijo son de una sola mente en cuanto a todas las cosas. They agree 100% with each other. Están de acuerdo al 100% el uno con el otro. Look at verse 21 again. Lean el versículo 21. But they may be one just as you, Father and are united with me and I with you. I pray that they may be united with us so the world may believe that you send me. Amen. Our prayer of our own life should be this. Nuestra oración para nuestras propias vidas debería de ser así. 
Every day you should pray this prayer. Todos los días deberías de hacer esta oración. And what is this prayer? Ahora, ¿qué es esta oración? Make me a chad with you, Elohim. Hazme uno contigo, Elohim. Make my mind one with your mind. Haz mi mente una solamente con la tuya. That's what you write. You should write down in your notes. Eso deberías escribirlo para tus notas. Make my mind with one with yours, God. Haz que mi mente sea una sola con tu, con tu mente. Make my mind one with yours, God. Haz que mi mente sea una con la tuya o contigo, Señor. Make my mind one with yours, God. Que mi mente sea una con tu mente, Señor. Now, if you're praying that prayer each day, do you not think God would bless you? Ahora, si tú haces esta oración todos los días, ¿acaso tú no crees que el Señor te va a bendecir? If you're doing the prayer with, in truth, right? Si estás haciendo esta oración, pero genuina, en una forma genuina. Because a lot of people pray, pray like the Our Father prayer, right? Muchos oran como la oración formulada, como el Padre Nuestro. And they pray, Father, forgive me, but they don't pray the other part. Y oran, Padre, perdóname, pero no declaran, no oran la otra parte. Because they, won't, they don't want to forgive others. Porque no quieren perdonar al prójimo. You know, it says, uh, forgive us as we forgive others who sinned against us, right? Esta oración dice, perdónanos así como nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. So when you're making this prayer, cuando tú haces esta oración, be willing to change the way you think about things. Tienes que estar dispuesto a cambiar el modo en que tú piensas acerca de las cosas. Make me a chad with you, Elohim. Que te pídele que te haga eja con él, con Elohim. Don't let the powers of the air rule my life. Que no permita que las potestades de los aires gobiernen tu vida. Don't let the shiny things of this world draw me away from you. Que no permita que las cosas que deslumbran en este mundo sean un obstáculo entre tú y el Señor. Don't let me take my eyes off you, Yeshua. Que no permita a Yeshua que tú quites la mirada tuya de él. So if you're praying that. Si tú estás orando eso. And willing to do the changing. Y estás dispuesto a hacer lo necesario para el cambio. Si Yeshua said he and the Father are one. Y Yeshua dijo que él y el Padre son uno. If you become one with them, you become uh, very rich. Si te conviertes en uno con ellos, eh, vas a prosperar. You become very prosperous. Te vas a enriquecer, vas a prosperar. You become very uh, uh, influential. Te convertirás en una persona eh, de influencia. Okay, so if you look at verse 21 one last time. Lean el versículo 21 por última vez. That they may all be one just as you, Father, and I are united. To, let me read it again. That they may be one just as you, Father, are united with me and I with you. I pray that they may be united with us so that the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. Amen. So if you're praying that your mind becomes one with their mind, si tú oras para que tu mente sea una con la mente de ellos. That means you might have to make a lot of changes, but, you, but there's great reward in those changes. Eso significa que tendrás que hacer muchos cambios, pero viene la recompensa, la recompensa al tú hacer esos cambios. Then you're praying, if you're, if you're become a chad, a chad with them. Si te conviertes en eja con ellos. And the powers of the air won't rule your life. Los poderes de este mundo no van a, a controlar tu vida, no van a regir tu vida. The lies of Satan won't rule, rule your life. Las mentiras de Satanás no gobernarán tu vida. When the uh, elect are being deceived, you won't be deceived. Cuando los escogidos sean engañados, tú no serás engañado. Wouldn't that be something good for you to have? ¿Acaso eso no sería algo bueno para que tú lo poseas, para que lo tengas? Okay, now let's go a little bit more to the positive side. Vámonos ahora a la parte positiva. Go to Ecclesiastes 2. Vámonos a Ecclesiastes 2. Call it 2, verse 1 through 11. Ecclesiastes 2, del 1 hasta el 11. Ecclesiastes 2, verse 1 through 11. 
Eclesiastes 2, del 1 hasta el 11. Ecclesiastes 2, colon, 2, verse 1 through 11. Ecclesiastes 2, del 1 hasta el 11. I said to myself, come now, I will test myself with pleasure and enjoy enjoying good things. But this too was pointless. Of laughter I said, this is stupid. The pleasure, what the use of it? I searched my mind for how to gratify my body with wine and with my mind still guiding me with wisdom, how to pursue foolishness. My object was to find out what was the best thing for people to do during the short time they have under, under heaven to live. I worked on a grand scale. I built myself pla palaces, planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and parks. And then I planted all kinds of fruit trees. I made myself pools from which the water, the trees springing up from the forest. I bought male and female slaves and had my home-born slaves as well. I also had growing herds of cattle and flocks of sheep more than anyone before me on, in Jerusalem. I amassed silver and gold, the wealth of kings and province. I acquired male and female singers, things that provide sensual delight, a good many concubines. So I grew great so I grew great, surpassing all who pre preceded me in Jerusalem. My wisdom, too, stayed with me. I denied my eyes nothing they wanted. I withheld no pleasure from myself. As I, look, as I took pleasure in all my work, and this was my reward for all my work. Then I looked at all my, at all my hands had accomplished, at the work I had toiled at, and I saw that it was all meaningless, feeding on wind, and there was nothing to be gained under the sun. Amen? Amen. Now, this is a very interesting passage, especially for men. Este es un pasaje muy interesante, especialmente para los hombres. Every man I've ever known Todos los hombres que el rabino ha conocido. said if I had all the money that I ever wanted, han dicho, si tuviera todo el dinero que he anhelado toda mi vida. If I can have all the concubines I ever wanted. Si puedo tener todas las concubinas que he deseado. And have all the money to pay for them. Y tener todo el dinero para pagar por todo eso. And they would do whatever I wanted. Y que ellos, eh, las concubinas hicieran lo que ellos le pidieron. Hicieran. So, imagine this man. Imagínate este hombre. All right, well, let's start here. Look at verse number one. Vamos a empezar aquí. Vamos a leer el versículo uno. I said to myself, come, come now. I will test myself with pleasure, enjoying good things. But this too is pointless. Amen? Amen. So, so what Shlomo does is he tries everything. Lo que Salomón hace es que le trata todas las cosas. Every secular satanic man's dream. El sueño de todos los, eh, los hombres satánicos, los hombres seculares. Look at verse number eight. Lean el versículo 8. I amassed silver and gold, the wealth of kings and provinces. I acquired male and female singers, things that provide sensual delight and, good many, and a good many concubines. Amen. So this, for the secular man. Para un hombre secular. What you just read in verse number eight is every man's secular dream. Lo que acabaste de leer en el versículo ocho es el sueño de muchos hombres o de los hombres seculares. To, to have as much money as he ever wants. Tener tanta finanza como la que ha anhelado toda su vida. To have slaves. Tener esclavos. And as many concubines as he wishes. Y tantas mujeres o concubinas como las que pueda desear. So these concubines would have to have sex with him anytime he wanted. Para que estas concubinas tengan relaciones con ellos cada vez que ellos deseen. The slaves would have to do everything he, he, they, he told them to do. 
esclavos para que hagan todo lo que tú le pidas hacer. In the verse number eight it says sensual delights. El versículo ocho nos habla de los de los placeres, de los deseos. It says in verse number eight, all well, the money I, any man would ever want. El versículo ocho habla de todo el dinero que un hombre pueda anhelar en su vida. He can have sex as much as he wants. Y tantas relaciones sexuales como desee tenerlas. What we see here is Solomon is allowing his mind to be controlled by his flesh. Lo que estamos viendo aquí es que Sa eh, Salomón permitió que el enemigo eh, dominara su, su mente con, o, utilizando su carne, los placeres de la carne. Look verse number 10. Lean el versículo 10. I, I denied my eyes nothing they wanted. I withheld no pleasure from myself. For I took pleasure in all my work, and this was my reward for all my work. Amen. So anything he saw that he wanted, he took and did what he wanted with it. Todo lo que él vio y anheló, simplemente lo hizo. He saw a pretty girl, he took her, took her as his concubine. Él veía una muchacha hermosa y la tomaba como concubina. He saw a beautiful chariot that he wanted, he went and got it. Él veía un carruaje hermoso que le gustaba mucho y simplemente lo, eh, lo adquiría, lo compraba. He saw beautiful women, he did what he wanted with these beautiful women. Con las mujeres hermosas, él hizo lo que quiso hacer con ellas. What he was doing is allowing full access to his mind from the devil. Lo que él estaba haciendo era eh, abrirle el acceso total de su mente al enemigo. In verse number 10, read verse number 10 again. El versículo 10, vamos a leerlo nuevamente. I denied my eyes nothing they wanted. I withheld no pleasure from myself. For I took pleasure in all my work. And this was my reward for all my work. Amen. Now, he withheld from himself no earthly pleasure. And no se negó de ningún placer. This is every secular man's dream. Este es el sueño de todos los hombres seculares. I got all the money I want. Tener todo el dinero que quieran. I got all the women I want. Todas las mujeres que deseen. And um, I got good health. Tener buena salud. I got all these beautiful things. That, why would I want to go back to God? Tener todas esas cosas, entonces, ¿por qué regresar a, al Señor? He's given his mind totally over to the devil. Él le está entregando su mente completamente al enemigo. So you would think that he would stay that way, right? Tú pensarías que él se quedaría así, ¿verdad que sí? Turn to Colette 12 now. Vámonos a Ecclesiastes 12. Turn to Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 y 14. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 y 14. Let's see what Solomon thinks at the end. Vamos a ver lo que Salomón piensa al final de sus días. Maybe he should, maybe he'll say, I should have stopped at 500 concubines. Quizás el debió de haber dicho, debí de haberme, debí de parar cuando tuve unas 500 concubines. Or maybe 300 was enough. Detenerme con unas 300. Maybe I shouldn't have had all those wives either. Quizás no, no debí de haber tomado tantas esposas. <coughs> Let's see what Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14 says. Vamos a ver lo que nos dice Ecclesiastes 12, 13 y 14. Here's the final conclusion now that you have heard everything. Fear God and keep his misfold. This is what being human is all about. For God will bring into judgment everything we do, including every secret, whether good or bad. Here's the final conclusion now that you've heard everything. Fear God and keep his misfold. This is what being human is all about. Amen. Amen. So those men out there are thinking that would be great to have all these concubines. Para esos hombres que están allá afuera que consideran que es grandioso el tener todas esas concubinas. To have all these slaves. Tener todos esos esclavos. To have, you know, 10, 50, 100 women doing, doing to your body whatever you command them to do. Tener 10, 15, 100 mujeres que hagan lo que simplemente tú deseas hacer. Let's look at verse 13 again. Leamos el versículo 13. Here's the final conclusion now that you've heard everything. Fear God and keep his misfold. This is what being human is all about. Amen. Amen. So Solomon re realized that when he gave his mind over to Satan, 
Salomón se dio cuenta, se dio cuenta de que cuando le entregó su mente a Satanás. That was not a good idea. Esa no fue una buena decisión. But some people got to try it for themselves. Algunos tienen que tratar, tropezar con eso, tratarlos por sí mismos. So Solomon says. Salomón dice. Here's your final conclusion. Aquí está la conclusión final. Control your mind. Controla tu mente. Now what's beautiful about the book of Ecclesiastes. Ahora lo hermoso acerca del libro de Ecclesiastes. It's a testimony of a man who tried everything. Es que es un testimonio de un hombre que lo probó todo. Well, he had all these women. Tuvo todas esas mujeres. They did whatever he wanted. Ellas hicieron lo que él les pedía hacer. He had all this money. Tenía dinero. He did whatever he wanted. Él hizo lo, qui lo que quiso, lo que anheló. He had homes and gardens and all tenía these things. Tenía casas, tenía jardines, tenía de todo. But when you give your mind over to Satan, you will not be happy. Pero cuando le entregas tu mente a Satanás, no tienes la felicidad, no eres feliz. So in Ecclesiastes is actually a testimony. Ecclesiastes de hecho es un testimonio. So he said, here's his conclusion. Él dice, aquí está la conclusión final. And he concluded that keep God's mitzvah, that's what being a human is all about. Él concluye con que guardes los mandamientos del Señor, que de eso se trata la vida de un ser humano. What he's saying there in the final chapter of Ecclesiastes. Lo que él está diciendo ahí en el capítulo final de Ecclesiastes. He said his conclusion is this. Él está diciendo que su conclusión es esta. The evil one has nothing to offer us. Que el maligno no tiene nada que ofrecernos. He said the world has nothing to offer us. Él está diciendo que el mundo no tiene nada que ofrecernos. What he concluded was is that Elohim has everything for us. La conclusión final de él es que Elohim tiene todo que ofrecernos a nosotros. Let's go to our final scripture. Vamos a la escritura final. The final verses. Turn to Romans 8, verse 5, 3. Vámonos a Romanos 8, del 5 hasta el 8. Romans 8, verse 5, 3, please. Romanos 8, del 5 hasta el 8. Romans 8, verse 5, 3. Romanos 8, del 5 hasta el 8. Romans 8, verse 5, 3, please. Romanos 8, del 5 hasta el 8. Those who identify with their old nature set their minds on the things of the old nature. But those who identify with the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Having one mind controlled by the old nature is death, but having one mind controlled by the Spirit is life and shalom. The mind controlled by the old nature is hostile to God because it does not submit itself to God's Torah, and indeed it cannot. Thus, those who identify with their old nature cannot please God. Amen. Amen. Go back to verse number six, please. Vayan al versículo seis, por favor. Having one mind controlled by the old nature is death, but having one mind controlled by the spirit is life and shalom. Amen. Amen. What he's talking about there is mind control. De lo que él está hablando a lo que se está refiriendo es el control de la mente. It's about mind control. Se trata del control de la mente. Look at verse number six again. Lean el versículo seis. Here's the one mind. Having one's mind controlled by the old nature is death. But having one's mind controlled by the spirit is life and shalom. Amen. So what he's saying is you're going to have your mind controlled one way or the other. Lo que le está diciendo es que de un modo o del otro tu mente va a ser controlada. You can either have your mind controlled by the old way of thinking. O podrás tener tu mente controlada por la vieja naturaleza. Or you can have your mind controlled by this new, this new love of God that you have. O podrás tener tu mente siendo controlada por este nuevo amor hacia el Señor que tú tienes. Having one's mind controlled by the old nature, it said, is death. Tener tu mente poseída o controlada por la vieja naturaleza, ahí se dice que es muerte. Having one's mind controlled by the Spirit, is life, it says. Que tu vida esté, con, esté siendo controlada por el Espíritu, ahí dice que es vida. Look at verse number seven. Lean el versículo siete. For the mind controlled by the old nature is hostile to God because it does not submit itself to God's Torah. Indeed, it cannot. Amen? Amen. So if your mind is being controlled by Satan, 
si tu mente está siendo controlada por Satanás. Who is controlling your old nature. Quien controla tu vieja naturaleza. But verse 7. <laughs> verse 7 is telling us. Lo que el versículo 7 nos está diciendo. That you're hostile to God. Es que eres enemigo del Señor, eres hostil al Señor. Because you don't want to submit to yourself to the law. Porque no te quieres someter al Señor. That's something very powerful that most Christian churches don't want to look at. Existe algo muy poderoso en lo cual la mayoría de iglesias cristianas no quieren ver. Look at verse number seven again. Lean el versículo 7. For the mind controlled by the old nature is hostile to God. Because it doesn't, it doesn't not submit itself to God's Torah. Indeed, it cannot. Amen. 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 Now, this is in the New Testament. Ahora, esto se encuentra en el Nuevo Testament. This is after Yeshua has died and rose and gone up back up to heaven. Esto es después que Yeshua murió, resucitó y subió al cielo. And he's saying, submit yourself to God's Torah. Él está diciendo, sométete a la Torah del Señor. I thought that that, when he was on the cross, he said it was finished. Yo pensé que cuando él estaba en el madero en la cruz, él dijo, consumado es. So if you're having your mind controlled by the old nature, you're hostile to God. Si tu mente está siendo controlada por la vieja naturaleza, eres enemigo del Señor, eres hostil para con el Señor. But if you want your mind controlled by God, pero si tú quieres que tu mente sea controlada por el Señor. You have to submit yourself to God's Torah. Tienes que someterte a la Torah del Señor. Look at verse number 7 one last time. Lean el versículo 7 por última vez. For the mind controlled by the old nature is hostile to God because it does not submit itself to God's Torah. Indeed, it cannot. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 If you have not underlined that... <laughs> First in your Bible, please do. Si no has sobresaltado ese versículo en la Biblia, por favor, hazlo. Okay, because he's telling us that we have to submit to the law. Él nos está diciendo que debemos de someternos ante los mandamientos, ante las leyes. Look at verse number eight now. Lean el versículo ocho. Look at number eight, that's an amazing verse. Lean el versículo ocho, es sorprendente. Thus, those who identify with their old nature cannot please God. Wow. If you identify with your old nature, si tú te identificas o estás dominado por la vieja naturaleza, if you refuse to submit to God's laws, si tú te rehusas al someterte a las leyes del Señor, then you're having your mind controlled by the devil. Tu mente está siendo controlada por el diablo. If you identify with the old nature, it says you cannot please God. Si te identificas con la vieja naturaleza, está diciendo ahí que no puedes agradarle al Señor. Now, what we need to do Ahora, lo que nosotros debemos de hacer is learn how to control our minds. Es aprender a cómo controlar nuestras mentes. I exhort you to learn Pero, how to control. El rabino te amonesta, él te está urgiendo a que aprendas a controlar tu mente. I exhort you to control your mind. Él te está exhortando a que controles tu mente. We should learn how to please Elohim. Deberíamos de aprender a complacer a Elohim. So we won't be part of the world that gets deceived. Para que no seamos parte del mundo que es engañado. We need to get rid of the old nature in our lives. Necesitamos deshacernos del viejo hombre en nuestras vidas. We need to become one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Debemos de convertirnos en uno con el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu. You, mean, you need to allow them to control your entire mind. Necesitamos permitirles a ellos controlar nuestra mente completa. You need to deny access to your mind from Satan any longer. Necesitas negarle el acceso a Satanás a tu mente, que no lo haga más. Look at verse number eight. Lean el versículo ocho. Thus, those who identify with their old nature <coughs> cannot please God. Amen. Amen. You need to become a new creation. Debes de convertirte en una nueva creación, en una nueva criatura. You need to renew 
your mind. Debes de renovar tu mente. You need to renew the way you walk with God. Debes de renovar la manera, la forma en la cual caminas con el Señor. You need to renew your marriage to Yeshua. Debes de renovar tu matrimonio con Yeshua. You need to renew your respect of the kingdom of our God. Tienes que renovar tu respeto al reino del Señor. You need to reprogram your brain <coughs> to walk with God. Tienes que reprogramar tu pensamiento, tu mente para caminar con el Señor. We need to learn how to control our minds. Tenemos que aprender a cómo controlar nuestras mentes. We need to learn how to please Elohim. Tienes que aprender a agradar a Elohim. We need to give the world no more access to our thoughts. Debemos de negarle al mundo el acceso a nuestros pensamientos. Because if you want to be controlled by the world. Porque si quieres ser controlado por el mundo. You're going to be controlled by its leader, Satan. Vas a ser controlado por el líder del mundo que es Satanás. But if you want to be controlled by God. Pero si quieres ser controlado por el Señor. Then you need to give him access to all areas of your brain. Tienes que permitirle el acceso a todas las áreas de tu pensamiento, de tu cerebro. Amen and amen. 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 Let's just bow our hearts for one moment. Inclinemos nuestros corazones por un momento. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful lesson today. Gracias, Señor, por esta lección de esta lección de este día hermosa. If you're out there today, si estás allá afuera en este día, and you're having your mind controlled by evil, y tu mente está siendo controlada por el mal, and you want to give control of your mind over to Yeshua, y quieres darle el control de tu mente, quieres entregárselo a Yeshua. First thing that you have to do. El primer paso que debes de dar is to allow Messiah to come into your life. Es el de permitirle al Mesías que entre a tu vida. If you want to have him control your mind, si tú quieres que él controle tu mente, then you have to invite him into your life. Tienes que invitarlo a tu vida. So today, if you want to accept Yeshua as your Messiah, hoy si quieres aceptar a Yeshua como tu Mesías, so that you can have power over evil. Para que tengas poder sobre el mal. And you need to say this prayer with me. Debes de decir esta oración juntamente con el rabino. I'm going to lead in a short, simple little prayer. Él te guiará en esta oración simple y corta. And if you want to accept Yeshua as your Messiah. Si tú quieres aceptar a Yeshua como tu Mesías. Then you need to say this simple little prayer. Debes de decir esta oración simple y corta. Say Yeshua. Dile Yeshua. I am deeply sorry. Realmente estoy arrepentido. Today I realize I'm far away from you. Hoy me he dado cuenta que estoy alejado de ti. But I want to change the way I think about you. Pero quiero cambiar el modo en que yo pienso acerca de ti. I ask you to, to wash me. Te pido que me laves. I ask you to clean me. Te pido que me limpies. I ask you to make me a new creation. Te pido que me hagas una nueva creación, una nueva criatura. You pray that prayer for the very first time. Si hiciste esta oración por primera vez. And you are born again. Has nacido de nuevo. But if you don't profess Yeshua before man. Si no profesas a Yeshua delante de los hombres. He cannot and will not profess you before his father and his angels. Él no te podrá profesar delante de su padre y sus ángeles. So if you have accepted Yeshua for your, as your Messiah for the very first time. Si aceptaste a Yeshua como tu Mesías por primera vez. Just let us know if you're in the sanctuary. Déjanos saber si te encuentras en el santuario. Just let us know if you're hearing this on radio, tel television, or internet. Déjanos saber si estás escuchando esto en radio, televisión o internet. Your name is Yeshua. Tu nombre es Yeshua. Everybody said amen. Todos digan amen. <coughs> Give a like a call, Yehovah, Maurice Marie, hey, ha, hey, Yehovah, Panavale, ka, viku, ka, Isa, Yehovah, Panavale, ka, viasem, ka, shalom. May Yehovah bless you and keep you. May Yehovah make his face shine and show his favor. May Yehovah lift up his face toward you and give you his shalom. Jehovah, 
te bendiga y te guarde. Haga resplandecer, Jehová su rostro, sobre ti y de tu misericordia. Jehová te hace a ti su rostro y ponga en ti shalom. In the name of the star, shalom. Everybody said, Amen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to the Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B E T H G O Y I M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures, searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our King's Word. We close the Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy 
an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom.